Hello everyone and welcome to another Pathfinder adventure card game scenario. This is scenario 6.4 and we're at the crypt with the character Drum, where the difficulty of checks against Banes that have the cold or undead trait in is increased by 3 plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So this is um, adventure deck 6, so a plus 9 modifier to defeat those Banes. Alright, we're with Drum. This uh, scenario actually calls for a siege deck uh, construction. So Drum will just be defeating all the Banes in the deck. Unless, of course, it's the villain. Then he'll just close out this location. So let's see what we got. Advancing the Blessings deck. It's a Blessed of Widget. And the first thing we get <coughs> is a Baited Jewel Box. So we did not examine this card. It has the Lock Trait. Uh, let's see. What can we do here? The difficulty to defeat is increased by the Snars Adventure deck number, so that will be 6. Uh, okay, so basically Drum could do a Disable 12. Uh, he, it's a Cash Lock. Oh, uh, shucks. So he did not choose that Power Feat where if it had the Lock trait, he would be able to add his Divine Skill. Let's see, any other uh, powers he has? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It says here, when you encounter a card before you act, you may recharge a card that has the divine trait to draw a random weapon, item, or weapon, armor, or item from the box. So do we need to do that? Uh, let's go ahead and check the hand. Uh, don't really have much going on. We got the stained glass elemental, so I think we're going to be fine. Just going to roll a straight up... Uh, Disable check. Drums disable as a plus five modifier. Roll on the D8, so three plus five is eight. We didn't make it, but we'll go ahead and recharge the stained glass elemental. So we can add plus seven to that roll. So seven and three is ten, plus six is sixteen, and we needed a twelve. So actually, we did defeat it by four or more. So we do get to draw an item from the box. Okay. So this is uh, banished, drawing a random item from the box, which is, da da da, we get the Staff of Minor Healing, which we will add to our hand. <clears throat> Actually, we're going to discard it, and we'll reset our hand. Drillm has better cards. Alright, advancing the Blessings deck, it's a Blessed of Abdar, and now we will explore. We get the Coffer Corpse. So this does have the undead trait, so that means the difficulty to defeat this Bane is going to be by plus 9. So we have to roll a 17 and then a 19. Okay, so we do have do, 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 immune to the mental and poison traits. Let's see what do we got here. We have the Axe of the Imperative, so we can uh, use our Strength to melee plus 1d6 plus 2. We could use that. <clears throat> if we do that, that assembling our dice, that would be a d10 and a d6. And our total buffs for that roll would be uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'd have 8, and we'd have to roll a 9 on those two dice. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it. Rolling, two d rolling these dice, we are adding 9 to the roll. Alright, so we rolled a 6 and a 4. So that's 10. Uh, and let's see. Our total buffs, thanks to the axe of the Imperator, was plus 2, and our melee is plus 6, so 6, 7, 8. So we rolled an 18, and we needed a 17, so we made the first check. Now for the next check, we will go ahead and use a Blessed of Nephis, discarding that to roll 2d10. So this time, still using the axe of the Imperative, but rolling an additional d10. Alright, so we rolled a 4, and a 4 and a 9. Okay, so we had 8, so 17. We needed a 19. Our buffs were plus uh, 8. So there you have it. 7, 16, and 8, 24. We only needed a 19. Okay, so the Coffer Corpse is defeated. Alright, two Banes down, three to go. Feeling pretty confident here. Uh, we'll go ahead and advance our, or reset our hand. We will advance the Blessing deck. it's a Blessed of Horus, and we will explore, and we get the Henchman, dun dun dun. 
So it checked it, so it's an undead, so that means that the check to defeat him is plus nine. Let me go ahead and uh, find that plus nine modifier I had. There we go. So we need a 39 to defeat this guy. So it says here, he's immune to the mental and poison traits. Before you act, succeed at a wisdom or knowledge nine check. Okay, so wisdom or nine knowledge check. So our wisdom is D8 plus three. Let's see if we have anything else we can do here. <laughs> is there anything else we can do? Fortitude or diplomacy. Okay, so it's just going to be a straight up uh, wisdom check. So wisdom check, <clears throat> a D8 plus three, and we need to roll a nine. Whoa, check that out. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. We made it. All right. So we are not dealt 1d4 mental damage, and he is not evaded. So now we can go ahead and try to um, destroy this guy. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. Uh, what do we have in our hand? So what we're going to do, he has a before you act, and so we could go ahead and use the acts of the imperative. Uh, but kind of better yet, we do have the Dune of Doom. We will try that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so that's just our option. We got If we do the Dune of Doom, uh, we could use our Divine Skill plus 3d10. So we have that option. I don't know if that's going to be uh, enough, though. We could use that in 3D10. Uh, let's see. If we use the Axe of the Imperative, we could use the Strength, Melee, uh, D8, D8. So we, here's our choices. If we do the Dune of Doom, those are our dice. If we use the N, we have a plus 3 modifier. Actually, Divine is actually a plus 6 modifier. If we use the Dune of Doom, or the Axe of the Imperative, we have a D8. Or, I'm sorry, D10, and then we have a D6, and we would have a total there of 2D8 with the Axe of the Imperative. So the difference is that with these dice, we would have a plus 8 modifier, and if we use these dice, we would have a plus 6 modifier. So we'll go ahead and use this modifier with the plus 6, and uh, that's pretty much all we can do. All right. Let's go ahead and roll. Roll in all these dice. See what we get. So, four, three, three, three. Okay, not, not good at all. Not good at all. We have this uh, henchman. Uh, after a character at your location rolls a dice on his check, recharge his card to allow him to reroll any die or discard this card to allow him to re-roll re all the dice. Okay, yeah, we're going to discard our ally because that's a terrible roll. So terrible, in fact, we're actually going to replace a d10 with that d10. All right, let's try it one more time. Let's see what we get. All right, well, that's a little better. So we get a total of 10, uh, 8, 9, 10. So 23, and we had a total buff of plus 6. So we rolled a 29, but we needed a 39. Okay, so we fail by 10. Uh, so since we fail by 10, let's see if we can do anything. <laughs> it says here... Okay, so we just take 10 points of damage. So it says here, we can, we can banish this card to reduce combat damage to zero. If proficient with light armors, we can bury it instead. So we're going to do that to stop the damage, but we still have to deal with this effect. If undefeated, bury an armor. So we do have this other armor, which we can bury. Uh, and then it says here, then suffer the Scourger's Curse of Vulnerability and Curse of Withering. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take the Curse of Vulnerability. So, and so Curse of Withering we get and the Curse of Vulnerability. Uh, what we're going to do now 
is we are going to roll to see if we recharge our Dune of Doom spell because we really like it. Or do we? 7 plus 6 is 13. We needed a 15. Wow. So we did not recharge that card. It gets discarded. All right, and this pesky person gets shuffled back into the deck. And since we failed that encounter, we have to lose a card from our rewards boon deck. So we lose the elemental brass mail. Okay, we no longer get that. All right, randomly we're going to see which card is on top of the location deck. It's the last card. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reset uh, Drum's hand. We're going to toss some cards. And we'll keep some cards. Okay, okay, hey, it's looking, hey, wow, looking really cool. All right, I like it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to advance the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of the Elements, and we will explore. We get Tabby's Last Jess. It's a Curse Lock Acid. Wow, I'm, I'm really regretting not getting that power feat where we could add our Divine Skill to Locks. Wow, really, really regretting that right now. So it's a Dexterity Disable. So we'll do the Disable check. Uh, Drums Disable is D8 plus 5. So even with the D8 plus 5, that's not going to be enough. Uh, we do have... Uh, we have a Blessing of Phrasma, but we got the Curse of Withering, which means that that D8 has to turn into a D6. So I think it's an auto-fail. It says, if defeated, you may draw a spell, an item, and a blessing from the box. If you do, each character at your location is dealt 1d6 damage. So that's if defeated. So I guess what's going to happen here is that we... we um, so the barriers, barriers don't do any damage. So we're going to roll this check, disable check. Thanks to Curse of Wither, we have to roll the d6, so we fail. But the barrier doesn't do any damage. Instead, what happens is it gets shuffled back into the location deck, and we have to lose another one of our boons. So we lose Smoke Glass Goggles. Okay, well, that's an interesting, uh, interesting card for sure. Tab is last suggested. It's just laughing at us. And we might have to encounter it again. Rolling to see which card is on top. It's the fourth card, the one in the middle. All right, looking at Drum's hand, I really like the hand, so we're going to keep it. Uh, advancing the Blessings deck, we get the Curse of the Sphinx. Wow, this really sucks because we have to take this into effect right now. Well, it says here, while displayed before you explore, examine the top card of your location deck. Okay, so we have to examine this card. So we examine it. Uh, it's a trigger. When you examine this card, succeed at a Stealth 7 check or encounter it. The difficulty to defeat is increased by 3. Well, Drums, um, yeah, he's just going to auto-fail that. It says, before you act, you are dealt 1d4 damage. Well, we don't want to take that damage, so we're going to use this armor. We can discard this armor. or we No, we can recharge this card to ignore a non-villain Bane's power that happens before you act. That's what we're doing. All right. So now what we're going to do is just a straight-up combat 20 check. Time for Acts of the Imperative. Assembly, it has a before you act effect. So our combat check is going to be D10 and a D6 and a D8. And our total buffs on this are going to be, we'll go ahead and use the embalming fluid to give us an additional plus two buff. So our total buffs on this roll are going to be four, five, six, seven, eight. The curse of withering states we have to turn this D10 into a D8. But we still get to add four, five, six, seven, eight to our roll. So we're rolling eight. So we get uh, five, six, so 12. 12 and six is 18. Wow, hold on. So, wow. Okay, I don't think we made this check. So uh, once again, our buffs were four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, fourteen, twenty. Okay, we made it just on the dot. Wow, that was a nail biter there. 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and our buffs were plus 8. Whew! Just made it. So this uh, boon, I'm sorry, that bane is banished. We're gonna, if we roll for the embalming fluid, we have to make a disable 7 check, and of course we got the curse of the withering. So our disabled die is only a d6. So we get 6, and our buffs are plus 5. So five, six, seven, and we needed to make a disable seven check. Okay, even with curse of withering, we were able to make that check. All right, all right, very cool. Um, what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna reset drum's hand, and now what we are going to do is we're going to advance the blessings deck, the blessing of the elements, and we're gonna explore. Da da da! He's back. Okay, he's got that plus nine. Let's see if Drum has any other shenanigans to help him out. So, what's going on this time is we have the, the Natron Fang. So we can go ahead and get another 2d8. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and use the Natron Fang. So assembling our dice, what's going to happen is that we got the Curse of Withering. So the highest die is going to be the d10. Natron Fang is going to be a D8. We're also discarding it so we get an additional 2D8. Oh yeah, but you know what? Before we even do all that, we got to do this before you act. Succeed at a Wisdom or Knowledge 9 check. So we got to do that, unfortunately. Uh, Drum's Wisdom was D8, but now it's a D6. So 6, what do we got? 6 and a 7, 8, 9. So Drum's going to have to roll a 6 on this check. If he, <coughs> if he wants to, uh, so, okay, man, this is going to be rough. Rolling a d6. So we rolled a 1, but fortunately we have the Blessing of Kepri. So, Blessing of Kepri says we can turn that 1 into a 6. And our Wisdom buff is plus 3, so we made it. So we did the, the Before You Act effect. We succeeded. So now we can go ahead and assemble our dice. So we are using the Natron Fang, D10, D8. We're discarding it for another 2D8. What we're doing is we're going to go ahead and use the Corrosion Spell. Discard this card to add one die to any check against a monster that has a Construct or Undead trait. Okay, but it's immune to mental and Poison, but this is an Acid Spell. So we can discard that card. We can go ahead and add another D10 to this check. And we have a Blessing of Phirasma. So we're going to go ahead and add another 2d10 to this check. And we're using the embalming fluid. Boom. Okay. Things are looking good. We do have to turn all these d10s into d8s because of the pesky curse of withering. So I have to find a bunch of d8s. Do I have any d8s over here? Assembling my dice here. So I got a d8 there and a d8 there and a d8 there One more d8. Let's see if I got it So we're turning four. There we go All right, so we're rolling all these dice one two three four five six seven dice seven d8 and our total buffs are With thanks to the Natron Fang and our melee four five six seven eight nine We're adding nine to this roll all right, so we get 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 21, 22, 23, 23, 31, 39, and of course our buffs were 39 plus 6, 7, 8, 9, so 48. Okay, we have defeated this henchman. Wow, that was really exciting. Okay, so we have uh, defeated the henchman. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, this character is going to be banished. And it says here, succeed at a wisdom or divine check with a difficulty of 4 plus the adventure deck number. So we have to do a divine 10 check. So just for fun, we'll roll the D10, D6. Or actually, you know what? We still got Curse of Withering going on. So we roll the 6. And our wisdom was plus six, so we do manage to close the location. So, wow, 
that's pretty exciting. That was, uh, man, that was a really super cool adventure. Technical difficulties here. Let's go ahead and do a deck check. So the reward for that scenario uh, was what was ever left in the boon, in the boon deck. So we get the Blessing of the Graves, Sling Staff, and the Daystar Half Plate. All right, so pretty awesome. We can uh, toss all those curses. And now let's go ahead and take a look at some drums deck. So, man, what a really cool adventure. Really happy with the way that uh, turned out. Uh, da, da, da. So we did lose a lot of stuff. So here's drums deck. Uh, we could go ahead, since we did gain some loot here, the loot that we gained was, of course, the Blessing of the Lady of the Graves. So the thing is, is I think what we're going to do is we are going to keep that card. I think we don't want to trade it. Where, where did it go? Oh, there it is. So we get the Blessing of the Lady of the Graves. So Joe's going to keep this card. Uh, he's not going to go to a trader. Uh, we're just going to rearrange uh, Drum's deck and get ready for uh, the next scenario. Alright, well, uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm pretty sure, uh, thinking back, uh, I'm pretty sure I lost all of the boons from that uh, boon deck. But I'll double check and uh, make sure I played that scenario correctly. But I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, if you catch anything, uh, just let me know. But otherwise, uh, thanks so much for watching. And I'll have another scenario up shortly. Alright, thank you.